Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Breaking Bread podcast. My name is Derek Modro. I'm Lee Edwards. And today we have a great couple here, the Johnsons, Mackenzie and Jason Johnson of The Hub Kitchen. I almost lost my train of thought that quick. <laughs> Thanks for having you guys. Right? Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> so I'm going to introduce you guys. This is a, it's funny. So for those who don't know, I have a baking business called MMK. And Shout out to MMK. Thanks, man. 1,000% to MMK Pies. MMK Pies. Go find them. The chew bread is but I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. The chew bread the is busting. Yes. The, the everything. Okay, I'm done. Go ahead. I appreciate the love. MMK <laughs> Pies. MMK, MMK, MMK. Well, he's one of my biggest gas, <laughs> man. I'm trying to tell you. I have a down day. And he just, out, he'll or call me. One day. Gas I'm like, you're right. You're right. I'm all right. K. <laughs> so you know when you're doing all this stuff you know you just, you're just searching and looking and you know you're sharing with people what you're doing and it's funny because um our previous episodes she just said that like you know you attract what you put out so the energy i was putting out at times like hey i got a business and i'm just looking and it was funny my sister sent me the flyer for the hub kitchen um startup when you was before it started i remember coming downtown raleigh to I've seen your portfolio, your introduction about the I whole thing. That. You remember that? I remember yeah, you there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, you were there. Oh, wow. Yep, I, re- I remember that. And I was, and when my sister sent it to me, I was like, "Well, that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm not trying to invest right now, but I am looking for a kitchen." But then the it was so good, I ended up. <laughs> 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 right, J- Jason just did it. He just killed it. And I've, I met him ever since. And I'm about to throw you flowers, man. Jason has been one of the biggest helps to my business. Mm. Seriously, like you really have, like. The back end logistics things I needed. He, Jason, he told me, "Hey, sometimes it's a, in a nice way, that's a stupid idea." <laughs> he has like, even, I mean, things I've been passionate about. Like, yeah, this is how I want to do. It. I remember I was talking about I'm about to nationally ship. He was like, oh, "You need to focus on the, on the triangle right now and build a foundation." And I was just like, "Yeah, he right." He right. I thought I sat and thought about it. Like at first, I was like, mm. then I thought about it. And I text. I was like, hey man, I appreciate you just being honest, even when he, you, he saw my passion and what I was trying to do. And he was just, you were just really honest. It's like, hey man, let's let's talk about this. And anybody who's looking for help, go to the Hub Kitchen. I'm telling you, if you have any food product that you're trying to launch, you need to holler at the Hub Kitchen. So. Again, just some flowers, just a couple. I'll probably you. be throwing more at in between. Hub at kitchens. Hub Kitchens. I'm Two telling you. B's. H-U-B-B. I T C H E N S bars <laughs> at Hub Kitchen. Good people, we out here with the Breaking Bread podcast. So um, we just want to start by saying, great introduction, Derek. Like you know, tell us more about Hub Kitchens. What what, what services does Hub Kitchens provide to the people? Um, I mean, pretty much when I started the company and had the idea, I was working for very large restaurant chains, making them a lot of money. And, um, <laughs> I was, I got tired of, you know, making big corporations money. And I thought to myself, you know, anybody who wants to start a food business is a corporation from day one. Mm-hmm. It's about you having the discipline and the ability to put the systems and structure in place to manage your company. So when I created Up Kitchens, I just wanted to create a place for food people to come and just be able to get started without having to have their life extracted from them. Because, mm-hmm. You know, when you're when you're trying to get into the food business, there's regulations, and you know, one of them is if you're making a hazardous product, you know, you can't be in your home. You need a certified facility. Well, those facilities cost you know six figures, and if you're just starting out, you're not going to build your own facility, you're not going to lease it. So, I wanted to create a place, and I'm going to say this honestly, I wanted to create a place where people could fail successfully. Ooh, I love mm. it. And what I meant by that is, is, I wanted them to be able to come in, not have to bite off too much. And I wanted them to be able to see struggle and it not cost them their dream. I wanted them to fail. I wanted them to feel the pain of not having money or the pain of not having ingredients or doing something badly. But I didn't want it to be the end of their story. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to be able to drop to their knees and then Hub Kitchens would come along and pat them on the back and say, let's pick you back up. That's right. My, My experience in my life 
I'm all about structure and I'm all about, you know, setting that back office. And he was talking about logistically, you know, my years of being a chef, I'm not a creative chef. I don't even cook at home anymore. This woman is the <laughs> chef. She cooks better than I do at home. I'll tell you <laughs> um, now, she feels a little slighted because when she met me, I was making like collard green yeah, stuff, flounder, fish, <laughs> crab bowls, everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep going. Keep, yeah. 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 All um, I'm the type of chef, I'm what you call a managerial chef, an operational chef. Mm -hmm. You give me a, you tell me I need to feed a thousand people on Sunday and I'm going to do the process. So that's always been my strength. Talent is Derek. Derek is talent. He can go in there. He's passionate about his recipes. He's passionate about putting his ingredients together. Mm -hmm. For him to be successful, and my model is, I don't need him worrying about the manager side. That's mm -hmm. where Hub Kitchens come in. See, in my philosophy, there's two types of food entrepreneurs. you got creatives and you got managers. Creatives need managers to support them. Managers need creatives. Mm -hmm. That's why in most restaurants, you have a general manager and executive chef. So when I created Hub Kitchens, I wanted Hub Kitchens to be your counterpart. If you're talented and you're not a cook, go cook. We'll help you figure out the bookkeeping, the accounting, the legal and stuff. If you don't know how to cook, we'll help you with develop some recipes and things like that. And we want to just give people a simple, good foundation and see where they go. Derek is probably one of my best advisory clients I have. We meet, I we talk, and he goes and does it. I don't have to motivate him. So Hub Kitchens can be everything you want it to be, but it's more so about what are you going to put in mm. and extract out? Because I've had mm -hmm. people come to me and I'll give them knowledge and I'll give them information and they just don't listen to it. And I'm like, well, that's your choice. But when you come back and your plan didn't work, I'm not going to tell you I told you so. I'm going to say, look, what are you going to do different this that's time? That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So I built Hub Kitchens to be one thing and now I'm, it's just developing to I just want to be the support system for any food entrepreneur that wants to go down that track. How many locations do y'all have right now currently? <laughs> um, we have Corporation Parkway is open. East Lenore opens August, finally. Um, yeah, man, trust me, that's been... Um, and then we have Glenwood Avenue coming. We have a location in Durham coming, and I'm actually picking up a guaranteed one small private kitchen. So Up Kitchens will have five locations in Raleigh uh, by the first quarter of 2023. And I think from that point on, we're going to just keep focusing on um, supporting people. Mm -hmm. And how do we, and we think that our programming and our support services are what really make us different. So we sure. want to see how we can grow and support more entrepreneurs. Oh, no doubt about it. Just again, more flowers. When I was searching for a kitchen um, originally, before I even met Jason, First, they were few and far between. Like, the first one I saw was in, like, Duplin County or something like that. It was far out. And I'm like, man, they don't have nothing. In Raleigh, how we don't have nothing in our capital, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, like I said, my sister sent me to fly. And I'm just like, well, I do need a commercial kitchen. Let me go check this out. And just to see the growth, because I remember the original plan. And then to see, you know, COVID hit, how you smoothly pivot. Not, you know, it was, you know, it was yeah. <laughs> I'm just not saying smoothly, but you know what I mean? <laughs> You, you know, you, you made it work. You should have kissed it like <laughs> smoothly. Yeah. See, see McKenzie, <laughs> you know how they say, um, like a duck, like yeah. she lives under the water and she sees the feet under the water. Everybody else sees the duck. <laughs> right, 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 right. She lives under the water. Right. 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 So. <laughs> right. And it was just that, like you said, the, the support, the structure, the, it helps you get your vision clear, you know, mm -hmm. of what you're trying to do. He has um, sent me opportunities that I wouldn't even known about if it wasn't for Jason. You know, he'll send me a random text just out the blue, and I see, and I look at it, and it's a link for maybe a grant or or anything. You know, just awesome. information. You know, this is dope. And then on top of that, he has the hub kitchen, but we ain't talk about RDU yet. You know, yeah. so the virtual kitchen that we he haven't talked about. We haven't talked about that, but mm -hmm. we got to start talking about that. <laughs> so tell us about that launch. It just happened last week, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had the grand opening Thursday. We yeah. launched the uh, first ever multi-concept ghost kitchen inside of an airport. Can you say that one more time? First ever. First ever. So I, I really sometimes have to think about this, is that I mm -hmm. am a partner in a deal that did something that for the rest of my life, I can say nobody else ever did that until I did it. Mm -hmm. The first. But, yeah, first ever. ever. Multi-concept. And what multi that means is that we have ghost pretty kitchen. much 2,000 square feet at RDU in Terminal 2 that used to be California Pizza Kitchen in Delico, and we put a wall up 
And pretty much we served nine brands behind that wall in a live working kitchen. And for airport travelers, you know, through the use of your phone in the parking lot or even at home, I can access the menu right now from my phone. Mm. Um, you can order your food and you can order coffee. So we have BU Cafe, which is mm. local grown, Durham. Shout yes. out to Dorian Shout and the job BU. they Shout do over there. Br- amazing brunch, by the way. Yeah, Dorian is amazing. Yes. Me and him. Dorian is my uh, is my CEO mentor i talked to dorian and we talk man to man mm-hmm. brother to brother like dorian and me awesome. you know i got he, he's got it's just that you know you meet somebody you get some wisdom like man i'm gonna keep you around i'm gonna keep, it. not keep you around but i want to learn and be with you so that's dorian american meltdown paul and sarah mm-hmm. you know american meltdown probably is, was the most dominant food truck in the south when he was out there i mean you're talking about going on good morning america he was yeah, voted best food truck in the mm-hmm. south and covid hit and you know he had a he decided, you know, that's enough, but we're bringing him back. He relaunched with us. And then um, Hub Kitchens actually has the breakfast menu. <laughs> I designed the breakfast menu to go out there. It's, you know, it's made to, for air, pl- airport travelers, mm-hmm. quick, fast, tasty. And then we have national brands as well, like, you know, Payway Asian Diner, 800 Degree Pizza, uh, Crispy Rice, Zoycha Mix. So it's, it was amazing to sit here and look at it and think, you know, you can go to this thing and you can order Payway. You can order Rebel Wings, which is a wing brand, and you can get your coffee, and you have to stand in a single line. So what you're saying is to make sure that the good people out there understand what we're saying. So I got a flight. Mm-hmm. I can pull out my phone, mm-hmm. open an app, Mm-mm. While it, Mm-mm. not even open an app. Go to on the website. web. It's on on the web. Person. Bam, hit a website. Mm-hmm. Order whatever food I would like. From nine different concepts. From nine different concepts. All mm-hmm. those restaurants you just named. Okay, cool. I want some American Mountain Downs, Pelly, something like that. Just walk into the airport. And the food will be ready. We're going to get through security. What? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Can't come this, this is for airport travelers, <laughs> people that have boarding passes <laughs> and belong there. Do not pull up and do say, I'm trying to go. Right. Right. <laughs> no bass, no nothing. Just like, oh. TSA does not allow wait. curbside order, pickup. My man Jason said, you go to the TSA agency. I got order number 72. Right. Fresh Sir, sauce and wings for BU Cafe. Where's your boarding pass? Where's what, what, I don't, what you mean? Yeah, I got order number 72. Right. So you're trying traveling you get through tsa and the benefit of this is you don't have to wait in line nope so yes. how do you get the food like so if i order from the parking lot get through tsa do i just approach the ghost kitchen and it's there nope. how do so i get the how do i what's the last your order we start a text conversation with you that is your virtual waiter so you can text that virtual waiter anything hey i forgot to say no onions hey i want mm, extras ketchup wow. in the bag and that virtual no, waiter that. is just like a normal waiter is serving you the entire time uh, when the food is prepared and we put it in a locker, it's called a locker, but they're a cubby. So imagine like if you go to like a package concierge or, mm-hmm. you know, those Amazon drop off points. It's the same thing. We have two of them and your food's inside of your cubby and you walk up to the thing and we send you a code and a QR code. So you can punch the six digit code in or you scan and your cubby opens for you. It only opens for you. You grab your food out and you're on your way. That's awesome. That's a but delicious. on top of that, because you know, we're so passionate about quality, we have a timer on that cubby. So that cubby has a weight in it, has a scale. And every time we put food in there, it automatically knows that's your cubby because we put a, the same six-digit number you punch in, we punch in to assign it. But that cubby knows when there's food in there. Mm-hmm. If you don't get to your food in 10 minutes, that cubby locks and turns red because we feel like your food shouldn't sit here past 10 minutes and you eat it afterwards. Now, something could have happened. You got held up at TSA. You got right. hit. Right. Why, should you, why should your quality of products struggle because of that. So that's what we do. And we've created that's this great. idea. We say, you know, we have to give them the better quality than what they get right now in airports. Mm-hmm. And we got to do it faster and we got to do it more convenient. Mm-hmm. We have a three-year-old together. Three-year-old, Newell's. Yeah. Newell's. Oh, my God. Right what now. Want, what do you want for breakfast, Michael? Newell's. What do <laughs> you want for dinner, Michael? So she's in a noodle phase. My wife I'm over here, she loves a sub. Yeah. And she loves a sub. And I'm a burger mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. So normally, and I'm coffee. So normally we would have to go, hey, babe, I'll watch the kid. You go get the Starbucks. Yep. Yeah. Hey, babe, you you watch the kid. I'm going to go get the burger. Mm-hmm. Now, phone, burger, yeah. wings, noodles, coffee. Done. Everybody. Good. All in one locker. And what's the URL for this site? Um, how, how could people use this? And here's the thing, man. When you said I got a three-year-old and his noodles, I'm in the same boat. I have a three-year-old, too. Oh, I have a three-year-old. Yes. <laughs> 
I have a three year two girls, my little oh. rainbows. I have an eleven year old and a three year old, and uh, my three year old is all about pasta yes. and rice. She likes spinach too. So, oh yeah, that's good. But like you said, it's like my wife and I constantly joke when it's dinner time we have to make three different meals. Yes. My eleven year old is a picky eater. I was a picky eater when I was a child, so you know I'm benevolent to that. Mm. You know, my wife and I, of course, we want the the culinary experience, yes. right? We want jerk salmon mm. and all this other good fun stuff that our kids don't want. Yeah. So the baby's <laughs> eating, you know, one thing. The 11 year old's eating another thing. So then you add the component of travel. It could yes. be a stressor. So this is really a value add yeah. to a lot of people because yeah. mm-hmm. a the focus is on quality. You're not going to get s- s- anything that's below par. Mm-hmm. B it's convenient, right? Yeah. You can do this on the way. You can schedule it in the future. You can do it while you're in TSA if you have. Have your boarding pass. Do it as PSA. Get to it, and then you can enjoy your meal to yeah. nourish you before you travel. And mm-hmm. that is a phenomenal idea. Guess, and guess what else? Idea. What guess else? what else? We'll deliver it to your gate if you want to. How you? How you? What you mean? I'm <laughs> on now. Come on, bro. So we haven't launched that yet, but it's coming. It's but coming. So in the I future, be, in the future, you could tell us, "Hey, I'm gonna order this food." But you know, hey, my gate is C-17. That's right. It's your pre-security. Mm-hmm. So you can order and tell us, deliver to C-17. That is So awesome. while you're going through security and stuff, you can just focus on getting to your gate, and then we'll bring the food down the gate. Now, this program of delivery will launch in Dulles. So I've already secured a contract to put another one of these in Dulles Airport. Oh, wow. So that's where we will probably launch the delivery, if not at RDU. But this thing is is is... Reef Kitchens, Reef Technology, give them their kudos. They're my partners on this, and they're the ones that have the brain power and came up with all the technology, the software. I am just happen to be the guy who's a chef who knows a little bit about food. But their technology allows them to do this, and they're the largest ghost kitchen operator in the world with over 4,500 mm. locations. Mm. We They wanted to go in the airports. It worked out, and now we're going to take over the world. Man, that's amazing, you know, I project man. these these ghost kitchen models, and I'm going to say it's, it's called Get Reef. It's Reef came up with it. I, I can see them in 50% of all airports within the next three years. Do yeah. they need baked goods? Yeah. <laughs> I still need the you URL him, because but... I be traveling and I be hungry. You well, know what I'm talking about? It's, it's orders.second. Which is like a two nd kitchen dot com. I texted to Derek. So. Perfect. Orders. But you can, but you can view it and see you know the nine brands that are up there. And, you know as we expand, we'll be expanding into other things, other foods. But we always try to keep a local component to the ghost yeah. kitchen. That's awesome. Oh, y'all see it on the tags and posts that we'll put on our, our Instagram page. So if you don't hear it here and can't remember it, go to our IG post at Be Bread Podcast. At Be Bread Podcast. And you'll see it in captions with this episode. That's just it. FYI. That's it. That's it. And on this episode too. So. That's it. So that's phenomenal. So, so that's the the RDU project in the airport. So in hub kitchens themselves, right? I kind of want to circle back out there for the audience. So, you're a young person. You love food, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that Hub's Kitchens is going to be that partnership to help you understand what you need. And I love what you said earlier when you said, "I want to create a safe place for people to fail." Mm-hmm. And I think that you know what I gleaned from that was. You don't want someone mortgaging their entire life Mm -mm. and then falling short on supply chain or infrastructure or insurance or some loophole, and now their life is in shambles. Mm -hmm. It's it's truly an incubator, right? You're like, okay, look, let me help you understand. Hey, you thought that you needed 12 pounds of sugar, but you actually needed 14. So you're two pounds short, and you're a week out, and you got a big order to fill. Here's your sugar, but here's the operational plan of where you went wrong. The Mm -hmm. coaching component is there Mm -hmm. as well. Lee, what you don't know is we really have had this conversation before. I can can imagine. Like, 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 I can imagine. I don't have your phone tap. So, (laughs) (laughs) of course not yeah and I think that's awesome so basically if you're a person out there with a dream you love to cook and that's what you like to do that Hub's Kitchen Kitchen is going to be that partner for you right Hub Kitchens will be that partner for you Hub Kitchens advisory services will get you from idea to launch so we actually will will meet with you we'll tell you what permits you need and we'll actually help you with the permits you know um I, I'm one of those people to say, I don't think I know anything else more than anybody else in the room. I think I just know how to do it a little bit more efficiently than some people do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also a part of something called the Main Street Program. Now, the Main Street Program, you've probably seen it on the news a couple of times. This wonderful city of Raleigh, you know, awarded us a three-story restaurant on Fayetteville Street for three years, mm-hmm. and they gave us about $600,000. Mm-hmm. And the wonderful people at Duke Energy said, hey, we got a second restaurant for you, and we got another six figures for you. So, it's a collaboration between Hub Kitchens, Raleigh Founded, uh, and Colo, and Downtown Raleigh Alliance. And we're going to create this place where if you're a food entrepreneur, we call Jason Wyden. I give him all respect. His brainchild, you know, he caught it up. Somebody you may want to talk to in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the front door. 
you walk in there and we'll help you with the rest of it. Because what I learned and she saw it, my wife saw it, is there's no efficient path for food entrepreneurs out there. Mm. It's not laid out. No. You know, like you don't know what licenses you need. Yeah. You don't know what permits you need. This department doesn't know about food. There's really not a lot of incubator programs right. or entrepreneurship programs out there that take the, the food component into, uh, into um, when they think about what they're doing. Right. They, 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 more so these programs are for people that want to launch retail businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Food is different. Food goes bad on you. Mm -hmm. That's right. People are going to eat more than they should eat. So I wanted to create something where people can go and learn about just food stuff. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a business expert. I'll tell you that right now. I can, I can fake it till I make it for a while. <laughs> but, you know, we, we're kind of getting to a place now where we're about to put some real experts in place. But mm -hmm. I think what I did is I gave that passion and that dream of we can do this to help people and make a little money at the same time. Mm. And that's what I did. I, she can tell you, I never did this thinking we were going to be millionaires or whatever. You know, when me and her were baking this brainchild, and she was baking it with me because Lord knows how many, Listen. how many sleepy <laughs> nights were you sitting there trying to, to go to sleep? To, to sleep. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny? I was thinking, I was like, oh, let's get man. to your like, what you call her, your real business partner. Right? Right. Yeah, right. Right. Let me tell you now, man. I married a woman, very smart, beautiful, intelligent woman that has a master's degree in clinical mental clinical mental health. <laughs> so I'm gonna let her take over. So what questions do y'all have for me? Um, I guess the process, very stressful. A lot of a lot of arguments. How much am I able to say here? A lot, a lot of arguments, <laughs> a lot of like sleepless nights, a lot of just frustration. But to see him where he is now, it was all worth it. That's it was awesome. all worth it. To see us where we are now. Us. Amen yes. to that. Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> Amen to that. I know that's real. The first ever on planet earth wow. i'm also was the first uh, we also were the first pre people to open an incubator in wake county mm -hmm. that's man true. that's awesome that's so there true. was no yeah. now i'm gonna give it kitchen archives shout out to will pettis and david foy kitchen archives I, you know they're my number one competitor here you know but they were in raleigh before they are on south wilmington street very nice big beautiful warehouse but they are not an incubator mm -hmm. i'm an incubator because i believe in you know getting my hands with people now that doesn't work with everybody Right. So my philosophy has changed. Now she'll tell you, I don't give people up until they ask for it. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I used to try to save everybody. Boy. I had a talk with him about right. that. I was like, look, you cannot, you cannot do that. Oh, like, you can't. They don't want to be saved. Yeah, like don't don't save exactly. They don't want to be exactly. saved. The curator of the culture yeah. <laughs> once told us, don't save, save her. her. Don't she save. don't yeah. want to be saved. So I learned some hard Mars. lessons. And that's why I say Derek is one of the good ones because, you know, he takes it. And even just like he just said, I disagree with him. And mm -hmm. he still respected me as a person. He could have made a decision. But back to you. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I don't have anything else. Unless y'all <laughs> have anything else. Oh, we about. got plenty. We got, okay. we got all kinds, yeah, we got all, <laughs> we got all kinds of good stuff yeah. coming up. So we're here with Hub Kitchens. You can find them at Hub Kitchens, H-U-B-B Kitchens on. What platforms are you guys on? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter? We do Twitter. Instagram, Facebook. Um, we have a website, hubkitchens.com. That's where you're going to get the most information. Uh, Catherine Samanowitz is our director of Shout marketing. Shout out to Kat. Catherine's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, she's great. Let me oh. tell you about Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's I got about Catherine. Oh, I got to tell you about Catherine. <laughs> so Catherine Samanowitz, she's on the website. She's a wonderful young lady. And she met me because uh, I had to do a video call for Campbell's entrepreneurship class that she was in. And she actually became one of the first four intern interns I took on. Now, why they gave me interns, I don't know. <laughs> but <clears throat> we worked together and then came January of 2022. She was the first W-2 employee that we actually hired from Bennett. She started intern. Then she was a private contractor for us. And then she, now she's employed. And, you know, she is our director of marketing, which is a really big title for someone who's right out of college. But I like Catherine because, number one, Catherine will tell you when she doesn't know something. Mm -hmm. Catherine has a work ethic to where if she takes a task on no matter how long it takes her, she's going to keep working at it until she finishes that task. And we've kind of turned her into, she's like the jack of all trades. And she's like <laughs> literally the glue mm. of Hub Kitchens because she keeps me in check. She keeps an eye on John. She keeps an eye. She builds websites. She does, <laughs> um, she does social media pages. Like she's really That's that awesome. behind the scenes glue that kind of, you know, keeps this thing rolling. Man, that's awesome. Shout out to Kat. Shout yeah, out to Kat. Man with. So with this, you know, the longitude here, how do you guys balance life and business? Where's oh the God. balance? 
Do we? Do we even balance? No. Do we even balance it, right? <laughs> That's we're, still, we're still trying to we, figure it out. We, yeah, it's we hard. We do, but it's I, really think, hard. I think we don't look at it as balancing. We look at it as this is our life together. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You know, this is our life. Like, we live oh, this. I'm an entrepreneur. I started first. She opened her own telehealth practice. So now she's an entrepreneur. She's Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And it's like, you know, I think we just look at our lives and we're like, we got to get it done. Yeah. Like, we're parents and we have a certain standard we want our child to have. We're, we also are young adults that want to enjoy life. Mm. We want to go on trips. And I think me and her just kind of look at it like, we got to put it in the bank to make it happen. <laughs> That's right. So we just work together. It's <laughs> like, work. who's picking the kid up today? Who's mm-hmm. doing this? Who's gonna, And it's just, I don't think there's a separation with us. I mm-hmm. think me and Mackenzie are just like, how do we do life together? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. And it's funny because I've been on calls with Jason and, and here, you know, their little girl in the back. He's like, sorry about that. I'm like, Bro, we all got and kids. Like, this is real come life. Here, come over here. It's real life, dog. Like, look, look, I understand. <laughs> Let me oh, tell you get. about the time. So I used to have my desk in my in our bedroom. <laughs> We get the corner of our bedroom. I have a desk. Right? Right. She knows this story. She knows about this. So one time I'm on a Zoom call yeah. with, with Will McGuire, who's one of my partners and advisors and in Colo.com. And, uh, you know, and Brandon, we're just having a meeting, you know, we're just sitting there and like, yeah. in the background, you just see this person trying to army crawl across <laughs> the floor. I mean, I'm and I mean, literally, like, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the screen and I'm like, everybody's on the screen is like, <laughs> She knows we can see her, right? Yes, and literally. Like, she's, yeah. And then I look up and I'm like, oh, man. The block is hot. <laughs> yes. yes. Save it proper line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Like, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. Because I got to go over here and Yo, get this stuff for the oh baby. Oh, my can we, God. Can we talk That's about hilarious. That's a funny vision. about it you have to <laughs> <Right>. be? <laughs> you, how weird it you have to be? Like, like you know what? I could ask if we can reposition the laptop. I could. Nah, this needs to be addressed right now. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna make it happen. Let me tell you something about. Let me tell you something about Mackenzie. Now, between the two of us, we go back and forth about who's the most stubborn. But me and her actually like we're we're kind of identical. Now yeah. we both are the type of people where you give me a square peg and show me a round hole. Mm-hmm. I'm going to figure out how to make it work. But what I like about me and her is we're not just going to go and use brute strength to ram it in there. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. going to sit back and look at it. All right, you know, what can we do? And she, of the two of us, we're like yin and yang. And we, you know, we've been married five years, been together seven. Now, I'm going to tell you, we ain't perfect couple. We got mm-hmm. our problems and everything else. And one thing we were not appreciating was how we work together well. Mm. I'm a visionary. I'm a person that can think of the idea, figure out how to get it done. So I'm your idea to opening. Mm-hmm. Mackenzie's your opening to success because she's mm-hmm. more detailed. She follows budgets and things like that. Yes. I'm a little bit more rambunctious Very. when it comes to that. But in the same time, <laughs> the things that she's fearful to jump into, I'm not. So I'll take the lead. And now in our relationship this year, we're really learning about how do we as a couple feed off of each other's weaknesses and strengths. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For example, travel, I'm a travel hog. I will search every single site. Kayak, I don't care. And I will yeah. find the best deal, right. points, right. everything. She just wants to go. Like, I so just go we had to learn how to let Jason plan the travel yeah. arrangements. But once we get on the ground, she's the itinerary person. She's the mm-hmm. one that will say, we're going to eat here. We're going to go do this activity. So we had to learn Jason plans travel. Mackenzie plans itinerary. We go on That's trips perfect. now. Seamless. 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 Yes. And you guys and you guys seem to have replicated that energy when it comes to hub kitchens, right? You can't do something that's never been done on planet Earth without that type of synergy. And I think mm-hmm. that's that's a really, really good message for you know for the people. So we we're having a great time out here, good people, kicking it with the Johnsons, Jason and McKenzie, Hub Kitchen. So now some fun stuff, right? We've been right. laughing, joking, and cutting up, but we got some surprises. Mackenzie's like, oh, no. Okay. Man, how did I get here? They, 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 they the door closed. She was like, oh, I'm nervous now. Like, oh, like, right, so she started off nervous. Then they done told the story about the army crawl, and now they about to hit me with these segments. What did I sign She's up for? She's just psychoanalyzing y'all. That's all that is. That's all that is. So Jason said, I'm going to get this, like, 25-page PDF in, in right. the red email. So, <laughs> but she, she, it's, it's, it's funny how many... Um, Therapists or psychiatrists, we know now between friends and family I'm trying to tell and everything. You. It's just like, I need to watch what I say. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen, I got to surveil myself, <laughs> right? Well, I guess just sitting so. in the corner, like, right. <laughs> right, over here. I do do that, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. 
Don't argue with the therapist, people. You're going to hurt your soul. No, no, no. Don't no, you argue no, with the therapist. You. I'm telling Boy, you. You're no, not going to win. No, look, you're not going to win. Let me tell you something. When it comes down to that, it's like, you you can't. Like, they can redirect the conversation. They can get ahead. And I just, and I'm a, I feel like I'm someone that debates very well. Right. And I was like, I had, and this, this has been recently, I'm a stubborn man, but recently I just went to her and I said, you know what? Can't do it. You're too good. <laughs> you're too it's, good. It's, it's verbal judo. <laughs> right. It's verbal judo. But you're married too. Yes. You haven't gotten married yet. Mm. But you, as a man, I think when I walked into my marriage, I heard other married men say, happy wife, happy life. Right. Listen, I'm not him. <laughs> Five years later. Just do what she says. Let me tell you something. I was telling you, I will, I, I stand by this 1,000%. So myself and a couple of my friends uh, that are also married, we all went out last night. We're at Sullivan's. Shout out to Sullivan's. Food was great. Yeah. We're at Sullivan's last night having a good time. And one of my friends was telling this very inspirational story of something that happened to him. But during the, the, the tribulation part of the story, right, his wife basically told him, said, look, God has a bigger plan for you. Mm -hmm. And then it all turned around literally the next day. Wow. I tell anybody who will listen, if you know that you married the right person, listen to your wife. Yes. Listen to mm -hmm. your wife. That does not mean you have to do what she says every single time, but that data is invaluable. You need to listen to what she's saying, unpack it, comprehend it, analyze it, and apply it to your situation. And nine times out of 10, you will find that that lady was right. So I agree with you, good brother. Cause I, you know, my, my wife actually has a degree in psychology. Now she's an IT like me, but I get it. Like, like it's, it's verbal judo. I'm like, we both in here like this. Cause I got a journalism degree. So I live, uh, so I'm in here talking. I'm in here like, Oh yeah, I'm with it. And she's like, ha ha. You know? So she's like, got you. Here goes the yeah, right, right. Boom. When it's punched, bam, now you're out of here. So, um, well, you know what I learned? I'll tell you, if you just shut up, Normally she comes back later on and be like, but you know I, what, I, I, wasn't, I, just, I wasn't right. You know, but you Jason, were, I can't you, do it. That's what you do. That's what you do. You, I, all right. Because I'll be, I'm just going to be burning up. I'm just sitting there like, word, like you know, <laughs> I got something for you. I'm like, I got a good right here. <laughs> so now I'm learning, just don't give them the chance. Okay, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things do, things do go a lot better in the crib when I say, yes, ma'am. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Awesome, awesome. So, first segment we're going to get into is called Two Shots and One. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to ask you a few questions. It's just three questions about things that you like because we want to get to know more about you guys, right? So, first, pretty simple stuff. What's your favorite food spot when you're on the way home after a long day, right? After you've erected the, the, the first ever oh, you we're know, on, commercial We're on the way kitchen. there now. Yeah. Pizzeria Toro oh, in Durham. Oh, my goodness. Pizzeria Toro. Toro. Pizzeria like Toro is hands down, I don't care who I got to debate, they, are the, they have the best... <laughs> Pizza yeah. Toro in Durham, Chef Gray, um, they have the best pizza, period. I could eat it every single day. Really? Really? What I, pizza I, do you guys get from there? Yeah. What do you guys like? I, I am the spicy lamb meatball pizza. Oh, my mm. wife loves that. She features the, there's this a, high there's Meyer, a Meyer lemon. lemon I know it sounds really Meyer, weird. Meyer, Meyer lemon. lemon pizza. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, my gosh. I got to try it. To die I need for. it. So, hey, what's on that? Lemon. Lemon, so lemon I thought, but I just wanted to, I wanted to clarify. I just so, like, okay. so really, Darius, I had to do that for the pizza. Right. So really, <laughs> no, really sliced Meyer lemon. I feel like they're marinated or whatever yeah. with um some mushrooms and then just cheese and that's it. And arugula. Let me tell you. Something. Oh, that sounds good. Let me yeah. tell you. And then if they don't. If that's a that's a featured piece. If they yeah. don't have that, she's a soft egg. So I do pay soft attention. Egg, you gotta pay yeah. attention. Soft egg piece. Yeah. But trust me, literally, when I've been in the doghouse before. I've driven all the way to Pizzeria Tour <laughs> without her knowing it. That's a 40-minute drive from her house. <laughs> Gotten her a pizza, drove 40 minutes back, because I knew that pizza would get me at least to look out the dog. I know, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and open the blinds yeah. on the window. <laughs> it absolutely did, too. So, yeah, Pizzeria Toro is definitely our go-to. When we want to reward ourselves, it's Pizzeria Toro in there. That's I'm awesome. At, I'm going to have to check that out. And I live in there. Oh, man, hey, it's so bet, good. When they put the recipe for the crust, when you taste the crust, mm. like the crust mm. is like... It's perfection. It really is. Lightly crispy on the outside, but it doesn't get that. Got that chew on it? But yeah, not too like much not too chew. Much you know, it's like you can yeah. chew chew. It's like yeah. you bite mm. through. Just perfection in the crust. Mm -hmm. I, See, I, when people talk about restaurants like this, I'm like, I have to try it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I have to but try it. But it's a very Perfect. small place, mm -hmm. open kitchen. You actually see the guy, and they use a real wood-burning stove. Mm -hmm. And you you see your pizza literally being put in there as soon as it comes out. So please go there. Anybody hasn't tried Pizzeria Toro in Durham. 
please go there. They're very also I want to say they are a progressive restaurant. Right. So they're one of those restaurants they no longer believe in like the tipping. Tipping is automatically on the bill and it goes to everybody in the oh, restaurant. I'm here it. for it. I'm, it. I'm here for it. To the front. So they are great in them. They're a very progressive uh, restaurant. They have very progressive policies and they have policies that I would like to see in more restaurants yeah. around the world. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So stand on the topic of food for your second question. Two shots and one. What's your favorite brunch spot? Oh, brunch. Because, um, you know, we love some brunch out here in the culture. Right? We used to have one. We haven't found a new one yet. What was our old one? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah, yeah. We're not going to oh, say There's that. a story here. Uh, we need the story. Is, we can't, we can't say that. Yeah. We used to have a brunch spot that we really enjoyed, and we thought it was great. Awesome food and uh, amazing food. And just had an experience that I said, you know, if someone is going to treat guests like that, I'm not gonna can't support yeah. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna do. It. I, don't, I don't care how great you. Th- and she'll tell you. Yeah. See, I'm a I'm a grudge holder. He is. <laughs> she'll tell you. I'm the one that walks out of something like. Especially when it comes to service. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I said I wouldn't stay in a whole restaurant chain. I mean, a hotel whole chain. hotel chain. And this is the largest <laughs> hotel chain in the world. I said I'll never stay. I'm with you like that. Jay. I'm. No, I'm. I could right. be very petty. I could be very petty. <laughs> I, am, I am pro petty. Even if it's not my petty, I see somebody being petty. I'm like yes, because yeah. you deserve to do it. So, yeah. so, yeah. so y'all the LeBron and D Wade of petty. Well, y'all yeah. throwing alleys. Yes, I'm there. No, for I that. mean I'm sitting there like we were we were planning to take our daughter to Disney World. And we had this hotel we wanted to stay in. Mm-hmm. And mind you, we didn't know that this chain owned that hotel. Yeah. We were looking at it. It was beautiful. I went in the back. Them Google it, show what kind of progress. Said, yep, cancel that one, baby. Right. <laughs> <Dang. Exactly>. Well, <laughs> so I uh, so we I have, have a beverage brand I do that with actually. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. not buy any of their wow. trades. Wow, yeah, you got to though. I mean, but yeah, no, but I learned that when you take the stand, don't take a stand on one location, mm-hmm. like take a stand on the brand because mm-hmm. somebody it. else is behind them. So when we went and we got horrible service or we get treated badly, I don't just sit here and say, Look, this is this person's fault. I can I can look at sometime and identify when something's a culture. Mm-hmm. And That's if it. a company right. has a culture where their employees don't take customer service seriously, then I don't want to be a part of that company. Mm-hmm. That's it. The customer is not always right. The customer's never wrong. That's true. That's it. And if you can't suck it up to be like, hey, how can I make you happy so you can give me your, your money? Of money right. That's it. No, I'm not coming back. So yeah. I'm petty that way. But we had a good brunch spot. I think if I had to make a recommendation of the next, first watch. Yeah, oh, first, first watch. I still have it been. Everybody says it's yeah, great. Still still it. Let, me tell you, let me tell you about first watch. I want all one. The one over in Davis Drive in Morrisville. Yeah. We went to the place that we used to go to. We had a bad experience. We went to first watch. Me, her, and my child. We walk in. We sit down. All the power goes out. Everything yeah. in the whole block. It was just a bad morning. They didn't us. put us out. They said, we'll cook you food in the dark. Mm. And they did just wow. that, it but it's great. problem solving. Like, yeah. like that's yeah. That people still hungry. We yeah. got it. Thank and you. They did it. Yeah, There's it still great. a problem that needs to be solved. These people are still hungry. They're already here. They've committed their time. Their children are here. We're gonna make sure we yeah. give you a safe atmosphere, and mm-hmm. we will find a way yeah, to give you your food in the dark. And that and that story and the, the manager that made that t- that made that call mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is reaping the benefits to this day because mm-hmm. now that action has them on a podcast with someone who is in the industry yeah. mm-hmm. telling that story. That's why it matters when people look at these things. From a business perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Every culturally, sometimes I feel like we're so focused on get the money, get the money, get yeah. the money. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all, I, I am team. Get right. the money. I, <laughs> I am team. Get, get the money. Very clear on this, but that, but it can't be get the money at all costs. Right. There you go. It can't go. be that way because if you do that, you're gonna kill your customer. Yeah. And one of and one of the things that people love to purvey about the customer about our culture is this: don't kill your customers. Yeah. And what I mean by that is figurative. If I go out here and say, "Look, I demand X amount of dollars for this product or service." And Can the customer pays that money. Can, Can you, you justify, justify it? it? Right. Yeah. Can you justify it? You have to understand that every customer has a spectrum of their justification. Mm-hmm. Someone who makes three hundred thousand dollars a year might not care that your that your taco was twenty dollars. Right. Mm-hmm. But there's somebody out here who doesn't make a quarter, an yeah. eighth, a sixteenth of that money where that twenty dollars matters. Mm-hmm. So the person who's giving them that taco, if it's cold to the person making three hundred thousand, they might not care. Right. But that could be the only taco that this person's gonna have for a month. Yeah. yeah. You can't discern them when they walk yeah, in the we door. So you that. gotta teach. You gotta. Tell everybody. everybody to do it. And my in my corporate life, I tell my team something very simple. And I say it all the time. Y'all going to give superior customer service to everybody. I don't care whether it's the janitor or the president. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to treat everybody the same. Yeah. If you do that, you ain't got to worry about me coming over there and, and, mm-hmm. and leaning over your shoulder. Right? Just 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 give elite service to everybody. Well, what about this? It don't matter. Mm-hmm. None of that's important. Mm-hmm. Everybody gets white glove service. Because A, these people are spending their hard-earned money. 
B, you can't discern it. And C, if you try to discern it, you're wasting time that you could be there delivering like love service. So there that's something go. that resonates mm-hmm. with me. I, 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 I love that. You know, when me and Derek, when he advisory, he sure. actually did the work and we costed out his, his items. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we found out what it's costing him. Then we figured out what does he need to charge to stay right. in business. Because you can't have mission without margin. Right. That comes from one of my partners, mm-hmm. Will McGuire, tells me that all the time. Mission He's like, margin, can't like have that. mission without margin. I need that on a T-shirt. I know. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, Will McGuire said it, so it's his. It's his. <laughs> right. and it blows up. Will McGuire should get credit. But no, um, he. It, I listened to that. You know, you can't have mission without margins. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got to make money. I, I hate to say it, and it's sad, but the world runs off of finances. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Yeah. That's fair. You know, That's a fact. <laughs> you know, and I tell people all the time, and I, I told Derek this, I said, look, this is a hobby or a business. If this is your hobby, if you want to come in here, mm-hmm. you want to make what you want to make and sell it for what you want to sell it, then don't waste my time asking me for advice. Pay the bill. Do what you want to do. Because I'm not in the business mm-hmm. of helping people with their hobbies. Mm. Okay, That's an emotional return you're looking for. Mm. I'm in the business of helping people run businesses, and businesses' priorities is financial right. return. Because you can't keep your business open if you don't have enough money. That's true. That's so it. if you want to <laughs> bake because you love baking and you want to give away your pies, go ahead and do it. Right. But don't come over here asking me to tell you how to do it better. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. No, so, that's fast because you definitely, like, we we went through, uh, we went through a couple of things. We went through, well, at the pricing point, we were going through pricing and just the margins and everything and realizing my true cost versus honestly true cost period you know what the way i was looking at cost versus the way jason broken down i'm like oh okay right these numbers are different right now it makes more sense per not just a bag but by the ingredient itself and how much exactly. you use that ingredient per pie per pie you right. know and it just it made everything everything that much easier it made my pricing more a lot more competitive let's be clear about it yeah and that's it's awesome. still it's still profitable and that's awesome you brought the talent they help with the coaching, mm-hmm. and that's what Hub Kitchens is here to do. Mm-hmm. At Hub Kitchens, eight at H U B B K I T C H E N S at Hub Kitchens. So, last question in two shots and one: What was a pivotal moment in your entrepreneurship? Oh, you good? No, talk about yours. A pivotal moment, my your mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. You have mm-hmm. your entrepreneur too. Oh well, that's true. Okay. But I know we're here to highlight yours. But yeah. with me, it was I just like us. that's it. That's, that's, it. Right. <laughs> that's it. But I get a pivotal <laughs> moment for me was just realizing, like, do I really want to work for somebody for the rest of my life? Like, I want to be able to make my own schedule and do that. And I think after having our child, I realized that even more. Like, I want to be able to just come and go as I please, right. spend time with her, spend time with Jason. And I just had that epiphany. Like, let me go ahead and do my own thing. I've been supporting him. Why not do me? That's right. right. You know? Let him support you. Yeah, let him support me. And that's what we're doing now. And, that's it's, it. and, it's and then you get some piece of real talk. I got, I got, I got, I got. Some <laughs> Trust me, she, she books sessions. She books clients. And, you know, she's a therapist. So I'm on daddy duty. You yeah. know, I got to cancel it. meetings. Yeah. And that's what me and her work together on. If she's yes. got a session and he hears it, I'm watching the baby because mm-hmm. my wife's got a thing to do too. Yeah. That's it. And I think my pivotal moment was about the same as when I came to the realization that I can't work for somebody else for the rest of my life. Yeah. I had to be honest with myself at some point because I kept having jobs and I was there for two years or less. And I kept asking, why am I not happy? What is missing? Mm-hmm. And I just figured out like, I don't feel like I need people above me for me to be successful. Mm. Mm. And I was like, you know, I don't have the most money. Okay, but I found an opportunity. That's it. that's it. And that's what I tell people. Me and Mackenzie ain't been rich. Trust me. My credit score used to sit close to the 400s. Okay? Mm. But <laughs> I had to te- yeah. oh, I'm waiting for the testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here, no, no, I'm no. here playing that, the playing the well, corporate mm-hmm. like, I, like, I don't, like I don't play like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> McKenzie will tell you, like, I'm the type of person that will sit at home and put the work in and plan some vacation that I know I can't afford. <laughs> yeah, like. And she'll be like, why are we wasting time? Like, because that vision. motivates me. Yeah. Right. That's this it. vision, right? And now I know yes. I need this much money to enjoy this exactly. lifestyle. That's it. So even though my credit was horrible, when I decided to do this, I just didn't stop. Like, McKenzie was there. She saw me get dressed up, be happy. I got a meeting with such and such bank today. I got my business plan. I'm about to go in there. They going to give me this loan. I come back home. It was a great meeting, babe. They about to do it. And then she sees me three, four days later. And it's like, yeah, I guess when I gave them my credit, they told me yeah. I couldn't do this. But I didn't stop. Right. That's it. Kept going. Kept going. Kept pushing. Perseverance. And uh, 
you know, as long as I wasn't putting the house up for collateral. Yeah, I, that, that was where I drew the line. <laughs> right, right. Now, what you're not going to do, you're not going to do right. that now. Well, I know that's she, real. she was very protective. You're not going to risk our family no. that's it. for your dream. Yeah. We got to protect home. So that's that it. was great. And that's why she's the most wonderful partner I ever could have because she's my, my, my balancing. She's the person that keeps me ground. I know a lot of men say that about their wives, but I'm telling you, like, me and this woman right here, like, I can't sing her praises enough. I enjoy life with her. I wouldn't want to do this with anybody else. I'd marry her all over again. Oh, and let me tell you something now. <laughs> That's awesome. She I crazy. Knew <laughs> <laughs> all right? I knew it was going to go there. I knew it was. I knew it. This woman has, like, literally taken all of my clothes out of dressers and threw them in another room. <laughs> and petty, sent me a petty. No, no, let me tell you this. Story. Sent me a picture of all my clothes in another bedroom. <laughs> and I said, why would you do that? They're messy. She went back and folded all my clothes oh, in the that's... other room and sent me, a, <laughs> sent me another picture. That was wrong with me. Showing me that she neatly put my I'm clothes sorry, out. Like that. so, so yeah, that's, that's tough. Now that's, now, that's, now that's King Petty right there. That's gangster right there. That's right there. When they right go there. low, I go to the Earth Court. Mm. <laughs> you got a yes. jersey up I'm in the better, Raptors, don't I'm you? I'm better now, though. That was some years ago, but he, yes. bro, I, she I even forget what you did. She folded the clothes I, in the other yeah. room. You know how upset you're mad you have to be somebody to take that time to be tedious be like, yes, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> the throwing them, I get. Like, I seen yeah, plenty of people toss yeah, clothes in the yeah. to But then when she's like, you know what? Oh, you think you're going to come? You gonna... For, for my wife, though, she didn't want to give me something I could be like, you are in the Some wrong leverage. for doing yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So she said, you know what? Let me go fold these. <laughs> so when he gets home, I can be like, I, need, I neatly put you out. <laughs> Enjoy the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it. I love it. So... We're going to end this with our segment, our classic segment here on the Breaking Bread Podcast. BPE. That's it. Big positive energy. So this is what we're going to do. Let me see if they're going to make the face that everybody else makes. Yeah. So for the next 60 seconds or for as long as you like to go, this is your show now. I didn't get it. Okay. They, they, they didn't make the face. So <laughs> y'all, so what y'all, not, not quite. It wasn't quite there. So how this how it's going to work. Y'all are going to talk about anything you're happy about, proud of, in your entrepreneurship, in your life. It, you know, this is designed for those to see that people in their community, people around them are doing great things. Right. And Derek and I are now going to be your hype men. Right. Okay. So, you know, we, we in the background doing the little Kim dance, all the type of stuff. Yeah. Y'all gonna run the show. BPE. That's it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I can love you better than. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? With the there's so that, no bigger energy, no bigger proudness than Micah Gwendolyn Johnson. Yeah, our child. Yeah. That is our daughter. That mm. little girl is. I think when she came along, she really said, "Y'all two gonna stay together." That's yeah. it. That's awesome. And That's she awesome. said, "I don't care what kind of problems y'all got, what y'all got going on. Y'all gonna work it out." Right. <laughs> I like having a mommy and a daddy here. That's it. And she is like, oh, my God. Like, I could talk about her and what she does. And, I mean, just in the mornings, hey, daddy. Good morning, daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mommy sleeping. Mommy working. Or That's like, what it. you doing? Or like, where are we going today? Like, yeah, she's so cute. But Be it's right all back. for her. Be right back. Yeah. Be yeah. right back. <laughs> and, I mean, just like her grandparents are here. Mackenzie's uh, mother and father, minds have passed away, but I love seeing her with her grandparents, like just getting and seeing them mm -hmm. get that connection yes. with her. And man, like that little girl right there, I remember sitting on the floor yesterday. It was me. Uh, Mackenzie was on the floor with Micah. Her grandmother and grandfather was sitting there on the couch. This is our home that we bought. And I'm like, this is this is rich. This is wealth. Yeah. That, right. There you go. This is wealth. There I got a healthy is, wife, healthy child. She's got grandparents. Me and Mackenzie bought a very nice house over in 27610 area code, which is Southeast Raleigh. And, you know, we're able to enjoy it. And, like, that's well. Yeah. That's what I'm most yeah. proud of is being a good parent and that's looking it. at her life. And also today was her first day that she left the house and went on a whole trip and <laughs> with, with, no with underwear. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. A big moment at a three-year-old too. Yeah. 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 I was looking at that diaper genie today for this morning. Yeah, diaper like, yeah. yeah, gotta get rid of it. Yeah. Right. You got about 10 days yeah. and you got to get out. Yeah. That's one of the proud moments. <laughs> yeah. Listen, no, it ain't I, proud, brother. You, you just tired of changing diapers, bro. That's one of the proud moments. I am going to DDT that diaper genie. Do you understand me? In the drive... Stop it. Boom! Like, like, get yeah, him I'm out so, of here. I'm so I'm sick of it. Yeah. Sick of it. Sick yeah. of it. Yes, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, Hub Kitchens, Johnson family, thank y'all so much for joining us. Thank you. Cool. And this thank is what Hub us. Kitchen is. It's just about normal people doing great things. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So, one more time for the people out there. How can people interface with you guys? Where can they find you? 
how can they get with Hub Kitchens? Hubkitchens.com. H U B B Kitchens with an S dot com. You can schedule a tour for our facilities. I was just about to say that too. You I'm can look at uh, our advisory services. You can see our team. Um, if you want to, you can go to Vicinity Capital right now. We're doing a test the waters to see how many people would be interested in becoming partners and actually buying buying into the company. So uh, check that out. I tell people I'm doing this. People look at people and they say, hey, I wish I would have been a part of that. This is going to be successful. Here's your chance. Put your money up. Mm-hmm. I didn't did my two years. I help people. I do what I got to do. And now I have an opportunity to expand. And now the community can come behind and own a piece of what Hub Kitchens is. Mm-hmm. So why don't we keep on owning more stuff? I like it. So invest in my company where you can own a piece of a small guy instead of giving you money to the guy that already has it. Right. That's there right. You go. That's and again, it. guys, let me just say, Jason is a straight up guy, man. I've... It's been shoot, twenty. I think it was twenty nineteen mm-hmm. when that when that presentation happened, and since then just the engagement and growing our relationship and just really, I'm um, being open and honest with each other. To be honest with a lot of things, I think is what made me stay a lot. Like Jason, just he's just honest and open about everything. He's he's very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not vulnerable. Transparent. 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 Thank you. Transparent. Very transparent with with everything that he's trying to do or what uh, or the vision he has with the vision I have and how it matches and everything. And like I said, we we talked, we we disputed. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> we did it all. So it's just like again, if you're if you're somebody who has a food idea, I strongly strongly recommend you from my business personally and, and and working with Jason and his team that you do it. My website, if you look look at my website, look how clean it is. Look at my Instagram, look how clean it is now. If you scroll all the way down to the, the end of my Instagram, you go see them I ain't gonna say they trash, but they ain't as good. <laughs> Now, I got to give credit. They're not as good. That's Roger. That's Roger. It that's, is Roger. That's Food Trap it's, Media. It's, yeah. So, Food Trap but Media. But it's part of your team. Yeah, it's part of my, it's, they, we do, he gets access to them, but Food Trap Media. So, I, I got to give him a shout out to the big homie. Roger. Roger. <laughs> now, we're going to bring it all the way home. Me and Roger used to work at the same job. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I met Roger a few years ago. And uh, so, I'm in IT. So I'm walking, you know, in the hallway, and I see this brother with this luxurious perm. I was like, Yeah, yeah, Roger got that nice beard. Damn, I was like, Okay, cool. Then he come around the corner, and had some J's on. I was like, Thank you, Jesus. So boom, we hit it off instantly. That was my guy. I think it was a marketing. He was cutting up. No, that had a great time. He left. He left the company. I'm still with the company. <laughs> and, excuse me. So then I'm talking to Derek. Totally different conversation. He was like, Yeah, I got this dude, Roger. I was like, Roger. I was like, Yeah. And he was like, Roger Cordigay? I was like, uh, I don't know his last name. I think that's it. Show me the power. I was like, yeah, that's him. Yep. Yeah, that's him. It's, it's amazing influencer how. Influencer of the year last Influen- year. WRA influencer, influencer of, the of the year. And he now offers services to Hub Kitchen's clients. So once again, if you're someone that want to master managing your social media, through Hub Kitchens, Certified. you can get access to mm-hmm. it. Certified. So Certified. see, I just took social media off your plate. There it is. Yep. There it is. They do everything but cut the oven on. <laughs> hey, 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 listen, this A&T degree is in public relations. I was waiting for it to come up. I was waiting for it to come up. Hey, man, that was good. I might... I do everything but turn the everything but turn the oven. Hey, that's a good one. That's it. That's I mean, it. You yeah. in PR, man? <laughs> no, I'm actually in IT, oh, but my degree is in PR. I'm definitely gonna have Catherine reaching out to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she can definitely Maybe talk some to contract to work. Yeah. So, so I am open to contract to work, and I'm gonna just there take two go. moments. I'm gonna just take two moments. I was uh, most outstanding public relations. You were <coughs> student of the year, National oh, Society. Yeah, okay. yeah. I got plaques on the wall. You know, when I walked across the stage, I had ropes as well. As, okay. You know, I had I had I had decorative pieces. Okay. Uh-huh. On the rope. And this is, know, where, this is where BPE came from, too. <laughs> Don't talk, me and him talking but this, ish. But, Doing this, this. but this is where now you're going to sit here and you're going to get hired by a central man. And that's all right. That's great. That's all right. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather, I, re, I would rather ha- hire an Aggie man to work with me and personify what I'm doing than going to get somebody, not saying anything's wrong, going to one of those major universities, but HBCU graduates. I didn't yes. graduate. I just went to Central five years, had a wonderful time. Um, <laughs> they ever want to bring me back for an honorary degree, I'll take it. But, um, but it's just that camaraderie at HBCU. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, it's so break, real. You know. It's yeah. so real. I had on my Aggie shirt earlier. You saw that. You was like, oh, you were Aggie. And boom. The conversation just lit up. Going to the classic this year. You going to Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love it, man. So, yeah, you know, hey. Hey, I'm my like, cousin Khadijah Plum, she graduated from A&T not too long ago. So. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. I was just, happy I'll let, We got to talk about this. Well, good yeah. people. 
Thank you for joining the Breaking Bread Podcast once again. A wonderful time. Great time. Yes. Great time. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jason, for making time. No problem. Have a good one. Good people, we out of here. We'll catch y'all later. Peace.